Welcome to MacGyver's Workshop, where you never know what we're going to be working on next. If you're not too careful, you just might learn something. Hi there, and welcome to MacGyver's Workshop, where you never know what we're going to be working on next, and if you're not too careful, you just might learn something. So today, we're on the old blue project. Today we'll degree the camshaft, I'll go through the process with you. Um, it can be very, very confusing because different manufacturers uh, on their cam cards may list their specs or their numbers differently, requiring you to uh, go about checking those numbers in a different way before you even begin starting to think about the green cam, make sure you have your cam card that uh, comes with your camshaft when you buy it. Uh, competition cams, theirs looks a little different. Um, I could post one uh, here, just a still shot of it. And of course, you saw what the Urson one looks like and uh, imagine, you know, I don't know about the other cams. I haven't ever bought any of theirs, so I couldn't tell you. But, uh, so in order to, to degree a camshaft, uh, you're going to obviously need a degree wheel. And I purchased a kit from Jay's, which is a universal kit that covers pretty much just about any way that you would uh, degree a cam and I say that because there's multiple different ways that you can do it you can do it with the cylinder head off the motor or in this case what I'm gonna do I'm doing it with the cylinder head on and we'll be using a, a piston stop and all to determine the top dead center and that sort of thing but I'm getting ahead of myself so you need a kit uh, this one uh, I was under a hundred bucks uh, come from Jags. It's got a decent size 11 inch degree wheel. The bigger a degree wheel you can get, the better because they're just they're easier to, to position and read because the you know the tick marks are farther apart. Gives you a little more fudge factor there, if you will. It makes it just a lot simpler to work with. Um, this kit comes with your uh, dial indicator. It comes with uh, some checking springs. If you're checking the cam timing with the cylinder head on, and you're going to also try to do it with a custom adjustable push rod, because you're also trying to determine what length push rod you need, you must use the checking springs because what it is is they're just strong enough to hold the valve shut but no more so it doesn't put any undue strain on your adjustable push rod this kit also comes with some mounting uh, bits as far as uh, to be able to uh, set your dial indicator up which is is handy but they don't fit a, they don't work with everything uh, i seem to think that these are this kit's pretty much set up uh, with the intent of working on a, on a, uh, uh, a V8 engine uh, because working on a straight six uh, it's not quite everything that I need and I had to go get a magnetic base to uh, hold my uh, dial indicator in the proper orientation to get an accurate reading um, but you know as far as kits go this is a good one uh, they give you these little vertical pieces here, and they have different size threads on each end, which will either screw into a uh, uh, valve cover bolt hole or a cylinder head bolt hole, and give you a place to mount your dial indicator. They also give you a piston stop, and what this is, is it screws into the spark plug hole, and then you screw this center piece in, and you run your piston up until it bumps up against this and use this to determine your true top dead center because just because you got your timing marks lined up 
doesn't mean you're dead nuts on top dead center. But we'll get to that more later. And then of course it's got all the other what's it's and do's it's. Uh, they give you a nice big flat washer to use to hold the wheel good. They give you some little washers here to compensate for different size uh, through bolts for your crankshaft. That way your wheel doesn't go around like that. And then they're nice enough to give you a, a little piece of wire. It's a little bit stiffer than a coat hanger. And then another bit, which is I thought real handy, they give you an extension for your dial indicator. So if you've got a lifter valley that's way down in there and you need to get in on it with that dial indicator, that extension will help you out. First thing we're gonna do, get our wheel kind of on the end of the crank. We're not gonna lock it in yet because we need to determine what our real top dead center is first. And we'll go from there because finding your true top dead center is the first step. You have to know that before you go anywhere any further. I've got my timing marks lined up. Now, we're obviously not gonna count on that. We're gonna find true top dead center, but that's a good place to start. You're gonna take your wheel, your crank bolt, and the little extra washer they give you here, and that'll get you started. And you take your little wire, and you find you a uh, convenient place to mount your mount your pointer, whatever hole you use on the motor. Obviously, you want to get you a, a bolt that fits it. I use a couple of washers there just to make sure it helps hold that pointer nice and sturdy. And then I'll snug that down. Now this bolt's not going to come with your kit, so you're going to going to have to have a reasonable you know, selection of, uh, you know, bolts in your bolt bin. And you kind of want that as close to the wheel as you can get it without it actually touching it. Now we need to find where our true top dead center is. You don't want to trust the timing tab on the timing cover, and you don't want to trust the timing marks because you could have six to 10 degrees of crankshaft rotation there as far as where your true top dead center is because on a crankshaft as the piston comes up it dwells at the top for however many degrees and of course that's all contingent upon the stroke as far as to how long your piston dwell is at top dead center so uh, there's a little bit of a trick there to where you actually find out where your true top dead center is and to do that we're going to use a piston stop now the piston stop that comes with my kit is of the small peanut plug variety and that's going to do you for probably 99 percent of the vehicles you work on however this particular forward six cylinder has the larger spark plug so what you do uh, just to make life a little bit easier, you can MacGyver, MacGyver this up in a minute as you chuck the metal part of the spark plug in the vise and get on the insulator and twist it and pop it out and then cut off your little electrode on the end. And what I did was is I welded a uh, 3 8 nut inside the body of the spark plug and that way I can just run some piece of all thread down in there and I got me a little washer and a nut on here just so when I get it where I want it then I can lock it in place just so everything's good and tight and we don't have any kind of like variables or tolerance of slop that we got to worry about but once I got her started in there then I go ahead and and run it down and snug it up like I said anything that's loose or sloppy is going to create uh, variance in your measurements so 
any of those variables you can avoid is better. I've gone ahead and, and snug this up. And what you want to do is you want to back this off of top dead center a good bit uh, to set your piston stop in here. If you back it off probably about let's say 25, 30 degrees that'll drop that piston down far enough because if you don't then what it does is is all it it'll do is, is it'll, the piston will come up and then just bend that all thread and then go right back down. We don't want that. We want a good positive stop when this thing comes up. So what we'll do is we'll back it off a little bit. All right. So we are at, let's just say 20. So we know we're uh, 20 degrees after top dead center. Okay, so we just make a mental note of that number of 20. And then we go ahead and roll it back around until we hit that stop again. Okay. And we hit it at 12. So to calculate where your true top dead center is, you take the first number, which was 20, and the second number, which is 12, that gives you 32, and you take and divide that in half. And then that number is how far back we go from either point, and that will be our dead nuts accurate top dead center. That can, like I said, that can vary from one engine to the next, depending on, you know, casting tolerances, machining tolerances, however the motor was built. I'm going to go ahead and loosen up my piston stop. I don't need that in the way, and I don't want to accidentally bump into it while I'm trying to rotate the crankshaft here. So now we're going to go back 16 degrees. So that's going to put us at 4 degrees past our top dead center here. We will go to that four degrees. If you were to have to try and loosen this crank bolt to spin this wheel around to line it up on your pointer, uh, chances are you would move, you would move your, uh, disturb your engine. So really all you need to do, is just bend your, bend your little rod over here. If you, you get your measurements close enough, then You'll have enough wiggle room on your rod here where you can just bend your rod to reposition it, zero out your thing there. So now we are at dead nuts top dead center. Now that we have that information and we know where we're at, we can move on to the next step. In order to go ahead and measure off of our cam load, we're going to need a solid lifter. Uh, you really don't want to use a, a, a hydraulic lifter because it's got a spring in it and you could possibly introduce some uh, variance there in your measurements if that piston were to compress. So uh, my machinist tells me that uh, in the case of the Ford 306 that the uh, small block Ford uh, lifter is similar. So if you happen to have a solid lifter laying around for a small block Ford, that'll work. In most cases, you're going to need to make you one. So uh, what I did was, is I took one of the old lifters, the best of the old lifters, and took it apart and made one by shimming up the center plunger. And uh, we can refer back to one of my previous videos uh, to learn how we did that. In the case of this Urson cam, uh, they want you to uh, measure. So I was editing the uh, video down here and I realized that uh, I misspoke. So I'm going to correct that here. 
Uh, what I was saying was that uh, with regards to the Urson cam and the cam card that comes with it, to check the specs against the cam card, you measure uh, off of uh, 50 thousandths lift, which means basically you know, when the valve opens <clears throat> 50 thousandths of an inch, you stop and look at the wheel and note that degree, you know, point. And then you go on around the max lift and then record that so you know what your max lift is and compare that to the cam card. Then you go on around and as the uh, valve starts to close, you stop at 50 thousandths of an inch before the valve is fully closed and note that degree point. And then the duration between those two points, uh, 50 thousandths open, 50 thousandths before close, uh, should match your cam card for the, the particular valve duration, um, you know, within one or two degrees. So, sorry for the screw up. Determine that duration. And if that duration matches the duration number that they have listed on the cam card, you're good. Now, I've gone ahead and installed my lifter in the uh, number one cylinder uh, intake valve or, uh, you know, intake load. Uh, I'm not going to use the the uh, valve cover uh, hole mounts that this Jake's kit provides because it's uh, uh, it just doesn't uh, it doesn't allow the allow me to position the dial indicator where I need it. So I'm going to use just a use just a regular old magnetic base mount. It's like 13 bucks at uh, Harbor Freight. So we're going to use that and then we can use our push rod which by the way I got my uh, new custom length push rods and you can tell there's a good bit of difference there in the, the length of them and that's where your valve train geometry is very important and had we tried to use the factory length push rods, the roller tip of the rocker would have rolled off the top of the valve. And then we don't want that. Now, I'm gonna stick a push rod down in here and we're gonna measure right off the cam load. I know I said in the past that I, I like to measure off the valve because that tells me exactly you know, where we're at but when you're checking your camshaft, you really want to measure off of the lifter or off the load. That way you know that the cam is right. Then from there, you can go and see whatever issues you might have in your valve train. Now you can see how I've got the dial indicator set up. One important thing you need to make sure of is that, that the shaft of the coming out of the dial indicator is lined up perfectly with the push rod because exa for example in this motor here the, the push push rod's not exactly straight up and down it's kind of kicked off at an angle just a little bit so you want to make sure that that the push rod is pushing straight onto the tip of the dial indicator otherwise that can introduce some variables in your measurements as well I took a little still picture real close up here so you can get an idea of what I'm talking about. With our intake lobe uh, at the heel, I've zeroed my dial indicator. And what we're going to do is we're going to rotate the crankshaft until the valve starts to open and when we hit 50 thousandths of an inch of opening, we're going to stop and then read what our pointer is pointed at on the degree wheel. So let's start rolling our 
crank around here. All right, now our cam, our intake lobe starting to lift. So we're going to go up to 50 thousandths. Don't be upset if you don't get it right the first time. Just roll back and come back and hit it again. All right, that's good. Now, where we're sitting at here basically is 13 degrees. Uh, that's after top dead center. Now, that value is going to be represented as minus 13. Go up to maximum lift. So that's 100 thousandths, 200 thousandths, and 70, and 273-ish, something like that. So that's roughly what our gross valve lift is, around about 273-ish. So we will write that number down. Then we're going to keep on going, rotating the crankshaft clockwise. And you're going to notice we're starting to come back down on the far side of the lobe here. And we're going to go until we hit 50 thousandths again, which means 50 thousandths before the valve is closed. And that is going to be 43. Uh, to calculate what our duration should be, subtract 13 from 180 and then add back in the 43. That's going to give you, should be plus or minus 2 degrees of what the duration says on the cam card. And we are on there by two degrees so we're good there on the intake side so now we can go and do the exhaust load zero out our dial indicator here because we know that's the bottom of the lobe there and we'll bring her around and again we'll read our degree wheel when we hit 50 thousandths. Okay. Where we're sitting at there looks to be about 26 degrees. Now because this is the exhaust side, things are a little topsy-turvy, so we're going to count up from bottom dead center, which is 26 degrees. Okay, hey, now we're going to take and go all the way up to our max lift here. And that is 70. That one's reading 276. That's a little different. But that's okay. It's all roughly within the pocket. And then we're going to come back down to 50 degrees before closing. And see, wow, I hit that one right on the money. How about that? All right. And this one is going to be four degrees past top dead center. So, but since this is on the exhaust side, all right, that's a positive four, not a negative four. So we start with our 180 degrees of rotation that we have to account for. Then we add four 
and then we add the 26 and that gives us our 210 which is within plus or minus two degrees of the 208 that's specked out on the cam card. According to this, uh, we are good. Thank you for watching. Appreciate you, uh, all my subscribers and viewers. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to comment. And of course, please subscribe if you haven't already and you like what you see. And you can also email me at MacGyversWorkshop at gmail.com. And check out my website, uh, www.MacGyversWorkshop.net. So uh, everyone have a happy and safe new year. And we'll see you next time.